G'day guys and welcome back. So today I want to give you some top tips for better fuel economy in your Jeep. So first thing, thing I've got to note is the Jeep Wrangler is the most unaerodynamic car probably ever made. It's less aerodynamic than a cow. So one thing before buying a Jeep is you don't get poor fuel economy. It's not going to be a Honda Jazz or a Toyota Corolla, whatever it might be. They are bad on gas just because how boxy they are, they're unaerodynamic, but they are fun to drive off-road and even on-road they always put a smile on our face. So today we're going to be sharing a few tips on how to get better fuel economy inside your Jeep. Right, the first thing will be driving it not like a race car. A lot of people get in their Jeeps and they expect it to be faster than it actually is. They are slow buckets. It's a slow shoe box and wheels pretty much. So don't treat it like a race car. If you want a race car and go fast, buy a race car. Uh, so go easy on the gears. Uh, watch your rev range, don't rev it too high. I normally keep it under 3000 RPM. That's normally a good range for me to change gear and still have enough power to increase speed. Um, any more than that, I always see a massive decrease in my fuel economy. So easy on the gears, um, the higher gear you're in, the, le uh, the more fuel economy you can get, the less for you will use. Um, try taking offline a little bit easier. A lot of people try and rev out first gear, second gear, um, then cruise around the other gears. So just uh, easier on the gears, go easier on your gear shifts, um, and the more acceleration you do, obviously the more fuel you're going to use as well. As well talking about that, is I invest in the Hikit X9 throttle controller, which gives me a bit more control over my accelerator. Um, I can change it between a few different modes. Economy mode, we are running factory tires and stuff like that, so economy mode does help a lot, but it does take a lot of control away from your throttle. If you're out on the trails, switching into a different mode, Will help you get better photo response uh, when you're trying to go forward driving but it will help your economy mode if you're just commuting to work and back every single day the second one is wheels and tires as soon as you put bigger wheels and tires on what's going to happen to your fuel economy is going to decrease massively i know a lot of people want to run bigger tires because it's going to be better for forward driving and everything like that but if you are commuting commuting your jeep to work um, every single day and just to the grocery store on the weekends and the odd trail during the months Maybe get a second set of tires um, that are bigger maybe 35, 37, whatever it might be um, And then run your stock wheels or a little bit bigger than stock whatever it might be Then run your stock wheels during the work um, That way your fuel economy is going to stay nice and good for when you're commuting to work when you're using probably the most fuel And then when you're out on the trails you can run your bigger tires I see a lot of people who are doing that and it's a great way to save fuel Another thing to keep in mind is that if you're going to bigger wheels, if you're going to a B-lock, B-locks are very heavy and that's going to add a lot of weight uh, to your Jeep and it's going to be rolling weight as well. It's not the same as just putting 20 kgs inside your Jeep, it's adding a lot more uh, resistance on the road and it's adding a lot more resistance on the road. So that's also something to keep in mind as well. They do make a lot of lightweight wheels but keep that in mind as well if you are doing some hard forward driving. You want some strong wheels so they don't crack. Um, so going from aluminium to a steel wheel, steel wheel will be heavier than an aluminium wheel. So keep those things in mind when you are choosing a wheel and tire set up. And off and tire set up. Try and look for something that's like a medium, something that's sort of lightweight but also very strong at the same time. If you don't need to run B-locks, you don't need that extra weight. They do look cool, um, but if you don't need that extra weight in your Jeep, why have it? Alright, number three is maintenance on your motor. A poorly maintained motor, obviously it's going to get worse fuel economy than a brand new and well tamed motor. So we're talking about um, simple things you can do every single week um, if you're going forward driving is to check your air filter make sure it's nice and clean as you can see our engine bay is dusty as hell so we've got to pull our air filter out give it a nice clean up make sure it's in good condition if it's bad we will change it. So a lot of people getting um, aftermarket intakes to get you better fuel economy it might get slightly better fuel economy but more than likely it's going to suck in hot air and it might actually decrease your fuel economy. So just a better aftermarket air filter that's going to increase your airflow is probably a better option. Another thing to check as well, spark plugs, spark plug leads. Poor spark plugs will decrease your fuel economy massively and also spark plug leads as well. Just general maintenance, um, I haven't tried that C-frame stuff yet but we should try it. Um, you can also put an additive um, inside your fuel tank that uh, clears out um, your injectors and stuff like that. Uh, we'll probably do a video on that, seeing if that actually does work. We are averaging about 12.5 um, litres per 100 k's at the moment. So we might get that fuel additive to see if that actually works to clean out the injectors. 
You can also try that C frame stuff as well. We haven't tried that yet, but we we'll probably try that in the future to see how we go. Um, but just good maintenance on your vehicle, change your fluids, uh, make sure you everything's up to date and well serviced. Number four is for the Jeep owners between the soft top and hard top. Obviously, the hard top's going to weigh a lot more than the soft top. The hard top roughly weighs between 50 and 60 kilos without accessories on it. Now we've got the Rhino Rack backbone system, so that's going to probably add another 10 to 15 kilos on top of the hard top itself. So keep that in mind if you can change between the two. We've only got the hard top, so we've kind of stuck with that extra weight. I'd like to know the fuel comparison between the soft top and hard top. 50, 60 kilos, that's another person inside your Jeep, so that's definitely going to add to your fuel economy. Number six is removing unnecessary weight from inside your Jeep, not necessarily your children, because you've got to contact them with you as you go. But stuff like air compressors, ow, you got me off the water. Removing stuff like air compressors, recovery tracks, recovery gear, um, all those things do add weight. Carrying unnecessary gear inside your Jeep um, adds fishing. extra weight that you don't actually need. Fishing. You're going fishing? Yeah. Good boy. A lot of people running um, excess weight, whether it be uh, drawers. Drawers add a lot of weight that can be up to 80 to 100 kilos. On top of that, you can add a fridge, you can add fridge sliders. All those extra things add a lot of weight, add extra drag, will decrease your fuel economy. I see people at work that had a factory JR Wrangler and they're averaging probably 9 to 10 litres per 100 k's. They put in a false floor for their um, fridge sliders, they put the fridge slider in, they put a fridge, they've got the fridge on all the time, so they've got a secondary battery inside their uh, Jeep all the time, which is powering that fridge, um, and their fuel economy decreased to about 13.5 litres per 100 k's. So all that extra weight is going to decrease your economy massively. And it's not normally stuff you need on a daily basis, whether it be commuting to work every day. You can take that stuff out, um, as I said before, and you just use that stuff on the weekends for camping, or put it back in. If you don't need that, if you don't need that stuff every day, take it out. If you're just going camping once a month or every couple months, you don't need that stuff in your Jeep all the time. I understand if you're like a builder saying you need cold drinks and stuff like that, power your fridge. But if you're just commuting to work in the Jeep, you don't need that stuff all the time. Um, and if you can get away with maybe running accessories trailer, maybe just like a small box trailer that you can take out on the trails. That way you're not clogging up your Jeep with all that sort of stuff. You can keep it in the trailer full time. Hook that battery up, hook the fridge light up, rooftop tent and all that sort of stuff. So keep that in mind, a box trailer can be anywhere from $200 to $500 plus registration, which I think in Australia it's like $100 a year. Might be the difference between saving on your fuel economy and spending that little extra money on a box trailer. All right, so that's pretty much it for today, guys. If you've got any other fuel saving tips we haven't seen in this video, leave them in the comments below. It might help someone else out. It might be something I just haven't thought about before. But I'm gonna leave you with this today. Do something kind for someone else, whether ask them how their day is going, push a button on the lift, buy them a coffee, pay for their groceries, just something, an act of kindness. So normally I'll leave you with, in next week's video, instead of doing that, I'm just gonna leave you every week with something inspirational, something that we can benefit other people rather than just ourselves. So do something kind for someone else. Whether it just be asking how their day is going, sit down with them, have a chat, whatever it might be, do something nice for someone else rather than just yourself. That's it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys next week.